it's Friday, and we're talking about ln of e. Well, we know that's one order. We did that, but we're talking about also the derivative and integral of e to that. Now, we've mentioned this in the past. Uh, we've t we know the derivative of e to the x. What is it? E it's e to the x, because I told you, right? Did we ever prove it? No, so let's prove it. Here we go. And let's use it some more. So, what if I want the derivative of this function, e to the x? How can I do it? Now, we've found numerically and graphically that it's its own derivative, and therefore its own antiderivative. But that's just, that's not an exact result. Let's get an exact result. What do you think? Yeah. You could, but that would also give you some kind of a numerical estimate with the convergence table. Can we do this more analytically? I think we may have done that at one point, way back when. X e to the x minus, well, mm, y. I don't know. What? Yeah, do logarithmic differentiation. Remember we talked about this? What if you take the log of both sides? You get the ln of y equals, what's the log of this? X ln e. But ln of e is 1. Ah. Now differentiate both sides implicitly with respect to x. And what do you get? You know the derivative of ln u. 1 over y dy dx. Remember what I'm looking for is dy dx, right? What's the derivative of x? 1. So how do you get dy dx alone? Multiply by y. So dy dx is y, and y is e to the x. So if y is e to the x, dy dx is e to the x. Ta-da! And so you know the antiderivative too, right? OK, so I wasn't making that up when I said that. That's a true statement. Um, let's try. All right, so let's summarize that real quick. The summary being the derivative with respect to x of e to the u, where u is not necessarily x, but a function in x, is e to the u what? What's missing? The u dx, right? That's the chain rule. And if I'm integrating e to the u du, right, you get it, do u sub, and it turns out like this, what do you get? e to the u plus c. That's all. That's all you get. OK. So let's work with some integrals and stuff related to this and derivatives. OK? Ready, Freddy's? Here we go. What if um, y? is 2 e to the x. What's y prime? Don't all jump all over this now. Yeah, 2 e to the x, right? OK. What if y is e to the 2x over 3? What's y prime? It's e to the u. So you get e to the u du. What's the derivative derivative of this? Two-thirds. OK. What if y is x e squared minus e to the x? What's y prime? Yep. OK. Oh, you get e squared minus e to the x? Is that what you're saying? OK. Yeah. Some people make a mistake here and do a product rule. <laughs> you could do a product rule, but realize that either the two is just a constant. So if you do first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, that would be silly. Someone might want to do that, and that's how, that's how you do it correctly. You get e squared, right? This is saying, like, what's the derivative of 2x? It's 2. This is a constant, like 2, right? You don't have to do this. Well, people get crazy and treat this as a function. Don't do that. OK, how about some integrals? Ready? Can I move on? Next page? What? So when am I going to get this? You done? If you say so. OK, dokie. Now, how about some integrals? Here we go. What is the definite integral? Whoops from 1 to e squared of 1 over x dx. 
Do you know the antiderivative 1 over x dx? ln absolute x. We're evaluating from 1 to e squared. So what do you get? ln of e squared minus ln of 1. Now ln of 1 is 0. ln of e squared is Is it? Remember, log base 10 of 100 is 2. Lo because log base 10 of 10 to the 2 is 2. Isn't this the same thing? Log base e of e to the 2 is 2. Why? If I say that log base e, log base e of e to the 2 is what? What am I asking? I'm asking, let me write it more explicitly, log base e, right? e to the what is e squared. Clearly, it's got to be 2. Or, what, do, what does the log do to the exponent? Bring it out front, and so it's 2 ln e. But what's ln e? 1, okay? I just make sure that you know how to deal with logs and exponentials, okay? Just reviewing, hopefully, silly stuff, but making sure you got it. OK, try that again, another integral. How about the antiderivative? Well, actually, the definite integral from um, ln2 to ln3 of e to the x dx. So what's the antiderivative of e to the x dx? e to the x, let's evaluate it from ln2 to ln3. So you get e to the ln3 minus e to the ln2. What does that equal? 1. Remember, e to the and ln are inverse functions. They cancel each other out. So e to the ln of 3 is 3. e to the ln of 2 is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. Done. All right. Questions about that one? All right. So a little review about involving ln and e to the, right? OK. How about this? What is the definite integral from 0 to 1 of 1 plus e to the x times e to the x dx? What do you do now? How do you anti-differentiate that one? That's a u sub. Who's u? 1 plus e to the x. Good. So 1 plus e to the x is u makes du what? e to the x dx. I've got e to the x dx to replace. So this is a straight u sub. This is u du. How do you integrate u du? u squared over 2, but u is? OK. Now, so let's plug in 1. 1 plus e to the 1 squared over 2 uh, minus uh, 1 plus e to the 0, but e to the 0 is 1, squared over 2. Well, that's 2 squared is 4 over 2 is 2, so you have 1 plus e squared over 2 minus 2. You can leave it like that unless you want to foil it. I don't know, does that help? Let's see. I don't know if that's simplify much. Let's see, foil the numerator here and you get 1 plus 2e plus e squared over 2 minus 2 which I guess I could leave it as four halves like it was. Four halves, right? Just to combine it with the one half here. And I guess I could write it e squared over two plus e minus three halves. Is that okay? I could check all of these on how, but I'm trying to save time for something else. Okay, any questions up to here? Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, especially on the AP, on the time constraints, they won't expect you to go further, probably. Okay? Unless they want a decimal equivalent to plug it into your calculator, get a, a little decimal out of this, you know. Uh, this could be maybe part, uh, part one question, where the answers are listed as three place decimal numbers rounded off. So you'll have to convert. Okay. How about this antiderivative? No, this definite integral. Can I move ahead? Ready? Yeah. All right. How about this? Uh, 2 times the integral of e to the x times the cosine of e to the x. All 
All right, is, who's U? Is this a U sub? E to the X. Who's DU? E to the X DX. We have E to the X DX to replace. So again, it's a straight U sub. You don't have to divide by 2, multiply by 5, right? So this is cosine U DU already. How do you integrate cosine U DU? Sine U, right? So sine of what? Who's U? E to the X. Don't forget the 2 is still in front. Plus C. And that was, oh, that was a um, indefinite integral, so I'm done. Yeah? Question? Wait, I can't hear you. What? Divide by what? Divide by what derivative? Well, yeah, but that didn't happen here. If it was 